Ryan with Mistock Geek, and you know what this is if you've been watching my videos. If not, I will inform you. This is one of these boards. This is the uh, custom VFO board that I designed for my BitX40 rebuild, which is this guy right here. And this is the VFO I've been using, uh, currently the LCD and the, uh, which plugs in down here, and the um, tuner, uh, which is a rotary encoder plug in here. Those are disconnected because I'm going to be reusing them. But uh, I've got this custom board here. And this custom board has drivers to ground out the relays for switching bands, which is are these four guys right here. Uh, it's got the IF shift button, mode switch button, memory, and band switch button. Room for the uh, Arduino Nano, and room for that, the uh, uh, QRP Labs synth board. And it also has a 5-volt regulator on it, and it also has a, um, you know, the uh, capacitors for that regulator. So this is gonna be first power up. Now I, I did program the board, uh, but I'm not going to power it up with the board on it because I haven't even powered this board on before. It might just smoke, I don't know. But we're about to find out. So I'm gonna reposition the camera and you'll be here with me for the first power on. All right, gentlemen, I have here my trusty Innova 3320, which I've been using. Uh, this is the first uh, DVM that I purchased uh, that wasn't from Harbor Freight or a garage sale. Um, I've got these probes that I purchased online. I think it was like $13. Uh, it comes with a whole bag of probes, um, which I've got around here somewhere, but a uh, you know, huge amount of, of extra connectors and stuff. Um, so let me find it real quick. Yeah. But a, a bunch of different kinds here, uh, even the cell scope type probes, which I uh, definitely don't need. But um, anyway, it's got some good stuff in there. It's 13 bucks, and I really like these. These are pretty cool for testing voltages in, in tight spots. So anyway, um, I primarily use these clip-ons. And the nice thing is, is that they're pass-through. So I can use the clip-on and the probes. So I've got... See, where's my connector? I've got my connector here. And I've got 12 volts coming from my 30 amp power supply. And you guys might scold me because there's no fuse. And you would be right in doing that. And that has caused me grief in the past. I have not yet learned the hard way enough. <laughs> so let's see. And this is too wide. I will be changing this design on the next iteration, by the way, just a little bit. I'm going to steal from W8DIZ and uh, have like a, a 2D coaxial <laughs> plug. There we go. I'll just take it off this here. But it'll have a, a, a negative, positive, negative, so that it can be inverted and still be fine, which is really a great idea. I don't know why I didn't do that. Of course, that's all, all great ideas say that. They make, they make you say, why didn't I think of that, right? All right, here we go. First power on, hopefully no sparks. <laughs> yep, I'm a little bit nervous here. Did I even get it on right? Nope. Okay. No sparks. <laughs> My... Ammeter is not pegged. Nope. And so let's see what we're what we've got here for voltages. If I can find the probe that fell to the floor. Sorry, I know this is incredibly boring so far. All right, so I should have at this here I should have five volts, and I do. And here I should have 12 volts. Yeah, 14 volts coming from my power supply. So my five volts are good. So I can unplug this. And the next thing is going to be to hook up the Arduino, the display, and the rotary encoder. So 
We'll get that out of the way for now. Now, these cables are not exactly optimal cables, but I did make them color coded. So black is of course ground. So it's real easy to just plug in ground here. And the rotary encoder, uh, this one is actually backwards. I'll make a new connector if I keep this rotary encoder. Or this may work out depending on my enclosure, I don't know. So we'll get that in. And well, so far a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> I'm not completely surprised by the way. There's, it's highly likely that there are mistakes on this board. Okay, so this is typical when there's nothing. Now this, this was just in use on my other uh, board. So let's try resetting the Arduino. Mm, nothing, let's try one more time. Yep, a whole lot of nothing there, huh? Okay. All right, so I actually had to finish the video after the last thing you saw, which was the power up with the blank uh, display. I finished the video and said, oh, I'll have to do, 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 and troubleshoot and blah, 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 blah. And then I immediately figured it out. So what I figured out, the reason the display was blank is because uh, I was just checking this cable here on my um, uh, I2C display and I had reversed the yellow and green wires for my other VFO because of, for, for wiring reasons. Um, so I undid that and you can see I, I used hot glue to do strain relief, which I'm gonna redo um, after, you know, later on. But um, so basically I just had to kind of melt the hot glue out with my soldering iron. Um, it doesn't mess it up or anything. It's got a really low melt point and it just comes right off the tip. Um, and then swapped those out. So that should be fine now. So now we're gonna plug this back in and we will plug this in and hopefully it's correct this time and we'll give it another test. And I did check continuity on it um, off camera and it was fine. So let's see, let me try to get it fully on screen here this out of the way get this out of the way all right here goes nothing and I did fiddle with this display so I'm gonna do that again because I might have yeah still nothing <laughs> all right let's try a different Arduino uh, with a different program on it and see if that takes care of it. It may or may not. <laughs> All right, so I had actually finished out the video a second time because it still didn't work. And I thought, man, what did I do wrong here? Um, you know, there wasn't any magic smoke or anything like that. And I thought, you know, I just could not imagine what it was that I had done wrong. Uh, so I pulled up my schematic. I traced, well, first I traced SDA and SCL over to these pins, and uh, which is um, um, 23 and 24, which is A4 and A5. But then I looked and I thought, wait a second, that's not A4 and A5, that's uh, was it D something or other. And uh, I marked my board poorly. It says J1 down here. And uh, down here at the bottom, I thought that was where my USB connector went. Nope, it was the other way around. So I had the Arduino turn around. Um, how it survived that, I have not determined yet uh, because it should have been killed, but it did survive. It works. Uh, the wiring on this is incorrect, so this does not work, but the buttons do. If I do IF shift, uh, it turns on or off. Uh, if I do mode, it switches USB, LSB. If I do mem, it switches between memory and VFO. And if I do band, 
it does the things it's ought to do. Very exciting. So that's a 40, 20, 15, and 10. So, um, of course, more big, big, big thanks to Bob, uh, GM4CID, I believe it was, um, the guy on the splash screen. This is his sketch that he built for me. And, um, yeah, GM4CID. Uh, huge thanks to him. This has been a – it continues to be quite a project. So um, many thanks, many thanks. Anyway, listen, it works um, this far. I'll troubleshoot the rest. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It really helps the channel. And for those who have recently subscribed, thank you. You've been watching Miss Dog Geek. We'll see you next time.